A very good morning to all of you present here. Today is a big day, a day to shine, a day to embrace the struggles and triumphs, a day to simply rock. My hearty welcome to one and all present here. I'm grateful for the moment. I can feel the energy. I can feel the excitement. And finally, the wait is over. Now, have you ever wanted to read about something and you realize that the news isn't clear enough or the news isn't reliable enough? Or the news is just too long to give your precious time to or you're extremely busy and all you want is news and just news without any hassle my dear friends all you need briefly you see briefly is just not an app once you download briefly which is available in android and ios you get access to all the top news of the day briefly gives you the dose of necessary news what's better is briefly is just news the raw news free from any influence the news here is short crisp and as the name suggests brief so what are you waiting for you can see the qr code on the screen go ahead and download briefly today before we get into it here are our sponsors for the event puro fit one stop fitness app is your personal wellness and fitness companion that that takes care of all your workout needs in one place whether it is setting your fitness goals, participating in virtual runs, or simply sharing your progress with your friends. FuroFit is your one-stop shop. Now, I would like to call Ashlesha to give us brief about FuroFit. Over to you, Ashlesha. Hi, how are you doing all? So good to see you all in the morning. So, I'm Ashlesha Pansi from FuroFit. So, FuroFit is basically a... Uh, personal wellness and fitness uh, application and there you can when the, when the where the user can you know track the steps using or run using the inbuilt gps and google fit uh, app which which you can sync in in your app so uh, so i would like to ask how many of us are actually into fitness like you know going for a run or workout I guess uh, this is this has become a mandate now after the pandemic even more. But even so, the majority of us are moving towards having a sedentary lifestyle. You know, causing many of us many problems. If if I talk about myself also, uh, most of my time goes into sitting in front of my screen, and you know, uh, just because I am into fitness, I just go. I just you know, give my one hour of my day uh, into fitness or run, having a run or having something productive which can give me some physical activity. And this is very important for us, I feel. And for the same reason, FuroFit organizes many virtual events uh, where you, where you know, where you know uh, the user can enroll and start uh, their fitness journey. So currently, we are organizing two main events. One is Youthathon, uh, which is uh, which is a uh, virtual event run and ride event where the user can you know. Uh, it's 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 more to it's more for the youth of india for making the youth of india fit which is very important for our country right now and it also focuses on moving race towards a greener future so being you know uh, telling all these things to mainly the college students uh, we, i am you know addressing to i would really like to uh, tell that please go and register for the event and start your fitness journey with it and the second is the second event that we are targeting is uh, beardathon which is no shave november theme and all of us being this uh, november month all of us are very interested for this no shave november and the men health and uh, cancer awareness the no, no shave november theme uh, focuses upon so this this uh, event also comes with many uh, exciting gifts and goodies uh, because we have our co-sponsors as the man company and garmin watches so these have some very surprise uh, exciting and uh, surprise gifts for everybody who will register so please do come and register for the events and at least start your fitness journey at least do something for fitness that is all i will i will want to say thank you thank you ashlesha now i would like to give a shout out to our education partners for the event MIT International School of Broadcasting and Journalism, Pune, a college that is focused on becoming the center of excellence in media education and training. It also provides students with a springboard to exciting careers in media industry. Next, we have Hansraj College, Delhi University, a college that enjoys a reputation of outstanding performance in sports, academics, and extracurricular activities. It is also ranked among the top 10 science, arts, and commerce. 
Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Free News. My name is Mehani. Going forward, I would like to introduce our guest speakers we have for today's event. Ms. Prathiba Rama, a senior journalist who holds 13 years of experience in the field. She has worked with Times of India, NDTV, India Today, Asianet, you name it. She is also the owner of social media initiative, News Sense which aims to provide news in the most comprehensible manner. Then we have Dr. Shilpa Kalyan, a senior professor with a gamut of knowledge in the field of journalism. She is also the head of journalism and mass communication department at Presidency College, Bangalore. Then we have Mr. Sambit Pal, a media educator and researcher, currently a professor at MIT University, Pune, Mr. Paul is a proud author of Bengal Conundrum, The Rise of BJP and the Future of TMC. Last but not the least, we have Mr. Sampath Ramanujam, a philanthropist, Bangalore Youth Awardee and an elected representative at Sige Halli. He is also the founder of Zest Pedal Cycling Group as he loves cycling. He is also founded an NGO by the name Anvaya Foundation. Now, I would like to introduce the moderator for today's event. Please welcome Mr. Sachin Tantri, a media and communication consultant, researcher, and trainer with an experience in radio, films, public relation, and communication manage management, and 11 years of teaching experience. He is also a mentor to startups and runs Mira Services, a media incubation center that supports entrepreneurs. Over to you, Sachin, sir. Welcome, everybody. Thank you, May. <clears throat> um, a very interesting day for all of us to discuss uh, uh, press freedom. In fact, I was just, um, you know, going through the reports where uh, India uh, fares, uh, you know, 142 number in the press freedom ranking. Now, well, there's a lot of debate saying that it's biased and all those things, but then I think we should go with what, uh, you know, numbers it says. But starting the entire discussion with that particular note, uh, what I would want to, uh, this entire discussion to talk about is various perspectives. We have various people from different, different walks of life here. We have two academicians, one journalist and one politician. So this will be a very interesting session uh, where we would want to discuss uh, frankly and fairly about the uh, freedom of uh, uh, you know expression, especially with respect to the media in India. And from different different perspective, and I would want the panelists also to keep in mind, saying that uh, we have a lot of young minds watching this entire session um, on YouTube, Facebook, and other uh, media. Also, I think these impressionable minds are looking forward to hear from you all, uh, different different perspectives uh, from based on your experience and knowledge. So I think this is, this is going to be a very exciting session for everybody, and we are hoping that you know uh, they they go out of the session with a lot of uh, different perspectives and it could be uh, you know uh, positive towards a particular uh, party ideology or a person but what really matters is we need to let the young youngsters go back with th go back thinking and not just accepting whatever has been thrown at them from the media having said that i would also want to uh, set a, uh, a tone saying that uh, it's not that the media is always uh, playing the uh, role that it is supposed to play that is the you know, the guardian or the watchdog. Today, I think there is a, a high element of doubt about the performance of media, that it's, it's being biased, it's being run by corporates, it's being run by political parties, or many journalists are ideologically aligned, or there is a lot of foreign funding. There are a lot of these accusations. So I think today's discussion seems to, we can start off on a level playing field, saying that, you know, uh, both of them are somewhere trying trying to find the relevance, both the accusers of the media and the media themselves, right? That is how I would want to start this entire session. So I, I think uh, uh, maybe we can start, uh, you know, the perspective from a politician, yeah, Mr. Sampath Ramanujam, uh, who's also, I think, a uh, techie and an also a social activist. I think uh, he can start off the entire session, uh, is, uh, you know, bringing in the political point of view. Uh, unmute yourself. Uh, yeah. 
I think all the panelists can unmute themselves. Yeah. Able to hear me now. Thank you very much for giving this opportunity. So um, good, You've given me an option uh, to start with. So basically, you see what I see as of now is the report, the report which is coming with things, and uh, we don't know how genuine these reports are. And what are the data in the background which supported this report? Which they had given a ranking of this uh, countries on press freedom. What we have to see is the ground reality. Now, uh, earlier the media is about uh, sharing information, sharing the news, but no more the traditional media or the social media is no more information platform now. It is all about opinion sharing platform. So now if you see uh, across India, there are so many regional uh, language news channels. And then as you had mentioned, each regional news channels are connected with the political party. So now these all need to be regulated. Now government has a different role to play. It is not that uh, um, uh, government is controlling something, but somebody have to moderate all this, which is coming on traditional and social media platform. That is what government is doing as of now. And uh, one thing what might change is earlier we used to see press is an elite group. They are allowed everywhere. They can ask anything. They never sense what situation uh, the particular uh, environment is in. If a family lost somebody, they can go and ask anything on them and they can publish anything. But now at least that allied thing is not given to press. Uh, some kind of moderation is there. And this is required when the media is growing multifolded like this in the last 10 years, if you see. But comparing to situation like emergency, we had grown up or we traveled far now right? The emergency, the censorship we had during emergency, during Indira Gandhi period, is no more there. And Rajiv Gandhi continued it. He had an aggressive censorship. He had also far come up with a defamation um, suit. So these are the things which is not there currently. PM or Narendra Modi or our, our uh, government is always supporting media for this freedom. I think um, there is no such situation where uh, India is uh, going down on freedom ranking or whatever. Uh, thank you, Sampath, for your views. I think uh, I am, I'm really sorry to interrupt you, sir. But don't you think that media apni zimmedariyon ka hai, apni freedom ka zalat faida uthari? Don't you think that? Uh, one minute, uh, the audience, audience, please wait for all the panel panelists to finish their um, uh, point of view first, and then we'll get into the uh, discussion mode. There'll be an audience round later. Okay. So I would request all the audience to uh, please remain, uh, uh, you know, please listen through the entire thing, and then you can shoot all your questions when that when your uh, chance starts. Okay, yeah, this is a panel discussion. We'll have to follow a particular format. Yeah, okay. So Sampath, thank you for your uh, uh, inputs. Uh, I think the right person to uh, uh, you know uh, counter you or substantiate you is another uh, journalist. So I would request uh, Pratibha Raman to uh, share her point of view about the, uh, the, the the whole concept of freedom of uh, freedom of speech and the current status of freedom of uh, speech or press, especially press uh, press in the current situation. Right. Thank you, Sachin, for this, and uh, thank you, Sampath, for the opening remarks. But uh, I just wanted to start off by asking a question: What is the role of Press. I mean, if you're going to be moderating the content of uh, every media outlet, then what is the role that a press plays? Uh, because I was given to understand while studying journalism is that uh, journalism forms the fourth pillar of democracy. And that is to question every action that is being undertaken by the government. And that is also the role of the opposition. But today I feel that the role of opposition as well as the press, if it is going to be moderated or stifled, to put it in more crueler terms, then I don't think there is a need for fourth democracy or the fourth pillar of democracy at all. Um, that being said, I think Sachin also started the conversation by talking about how India has ranked 142 among 180 countries on the index. I think you should give that perspective as well. Apart from that, 67 journalists were arrested and nearly 200 physically attacked in 2020, according to a study by Geeta Seshu for the Free Speech Collective. And uh, I think it was one of uh, one such collective that also spoke about uh, the Pegasus and uh, various other such uh, investigative materials that uh, came to light. If it is not for the press, if 
uh, if it is not going to be controlled, then where is the question of all these kind of criminal activities or corrupt activities that is going to be highlighted? So I guess that needs to uh, kind of find a free space in democracy and only then we can find a way forward. I want to also end this <laughs> with a small personal experience of mine. Uh, I think this was during the time of uh, Raksha Bandhan in the year 2019 or 2018. I'm not very sure of the year. But um, I was thinking of writing a story on Raksha Bandhan talking about many rape cases where you have their very own family members trying to uh, 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 trying to indulge in such uh, uh, sexually criminal activities. And I wanted to highlight that fact. But I chose Raksha Bandhan as the date only to uh, only to uh, drive home the point that such sisters are also to be prayed for. I don't understand where I went wrong, but I was one of those victims of several trolls. I was bombarded with uh, uh, so many such trolls on social media uh, and several of them resorting to rape threats as well. So that is the condition of every journalist. And I just thought a personal experience of mine must also be highlighted here just to inform various uh, of these amateur journalists who are uh, waiting to see what uh, is awaiting them on ground to tell them that such things happen on ground too. Thank you, Sachin. Thank you, Pratibha. Uh, I would request uh, Sambit Pal, Professor Sambit Pal to share his point of view as an academician. Uh, thank you, Sachin, and uh, welcome you all on behalf of uh, MIT University, uh, MIT DT University, which is uh, a, a partner of this event, and I am uh, teaching here. Uh, yes, uh, the tone has been set, but my uh, you know fundamental question is: Has praise been free ever? I mean, what what freedom are we talking about? If the freedom is to express freely your opinion, your news. Uh, you know, uh, and news and views, as we call it, we have never been free. You know, and whose opinion, whose news that we are, uh, you know, disseminating through uh, media? That's our target audience. Whom are we targeting? How are we de determining that? You know, who is our target audience or who is the target reader? That's decided either by the newspaper's ideology or the ownership of the newspaper or the media, I, I won't say just newspaper, uh, ownership of the newspaper, and then comes the funding for the newspaper, wherever it is coming from. So they decide who is my target audience, whom I want to target. And be it pre-independence era, be it uh, you know, post-independence era, press has never been free. During British era, of course, the Britishers had, you know, suppressed our views and Gandhiji was, you know, uh, has played a, I mean, huge role in, in, uh, uh, in, in terms of uh, press, media and it's, you know, uh, upholding the uh, freedom of speech and all. But he was, at the end of the day, was preaching his views. So here the determining factor is that if the press is talking in favor of the people in the public interest or not. And in doing so, if they are being, you know, uh, obstructed by some forces, the forces I've just talked about, the media's ideology, that particular media house's ideology, the ownership of the media, the funding of that media house, and of course, you know, the political interest that comes in. We talk about media freedom and we think that, you know, US is uh, the role model and they have that, uh, you know, uh, kind of protection under the constitution. The first amendment of the US constitution has, has given the protection to the uh, press and media that they will not be, you know, attacked by the government in that sense or cannot take, uh, you know, any uh, stringent action. But look at India. What is the first amendment of Indian constitution that restricted the fundamental rights of, you know, uh, uh, speech uh, and expression. And uh, that is where the praise things that we draw are, uh, you know, uh, our, our, our power to speak freely and express our opinion freely. That is the individual's uh, power. And we think that media is taking, drawing the power from that fundamental right. And 
we do not have any law for the media itself whatever we teach in terms of media laws and all those are like ipcs and crpcs and some other acts that have been passed we do not have any law for the media as such so since the first amendment to indian constitution till 2021 the same thing is happening be it uh, you know there are cases like uh, crossroads there was a magazine i'm not going in details that was banned uh, in 1951 organizer that was banned in 1951 in 2021 we have eight journalists uh, you know facing sedition charges and in between we have emergency as well what has fundamentally changed and that shouldn't change and as us i mean a lot of young minds are here earlier the journalists the grassroots journalists they had their stand very clear they did not have any censorship on them now what is happening the ground level journalists are having censorship on them they are looking up to the political leaders they are looking up to the political ideology and before their you know owners or the editors are telling them not to write this or not to you know uh, broadcast this they are censoring themselves that is what should be you know changed that is a fundamental change that has happened and me who had been a journalist for you know almost one and a half decades i have felt this change happening and that is the problem here at this moment i stop here and let others speak yes uh, thank you professor for uh, bringing in a very pertinent point that uh, when the press has been free so i think uh, if if we keep that as a premise then asking the question is press free is itself redundant right now because i don't think so at any point of time press is going to be free right and today we talking about the social media as a uh, as a very personal form of uh, media right and even there uh, we see the owners um, you know either shadow banning or suspending their accounts in fact the most um, surprising thing was they suspended the uh, president of america's account uh, immediately after he demoted office of course we are not trying to take sides of the president but then uh, that's completely an uh, uh, overreach yeah uh, uh, you know overreach towards uh, uh, freedom of expression i think a lot of presidents and um, head of states have been quite uh, uh you know unhappy with what twitter has done with trump i think that's another debate maybe we can uh, continue with that later now i would like to uh, you know uh, we have saved the best for the last so uh, shilpa ma'am uh, what about your uh, perspectives about the same thank you sachin uh, just before you know going into uh, it's different perspectives you know that uh, each of them have uh, each of the other fellow panelists have expressed uh, just to start with the question fundamental fundamental question we are talking about freedom of press what how do you define free freedom how free are we talking about how free, when you say okay now we are free you know this is ultimate freedom can we define it you know if you look at the statistics is yes, of course i'm not talking about i'm not getting into the world uh, press freedom in, uh, index because if you look at the uh you know uh, even the past rankings india has never um, i don't think india has uh, uh, had any rankings below 120 even in 2013 20, 2012 if you see india ranking was almost 140 that was the first time india had shot up uh, you know in the press freedom index so somewhere you know this ranking has always been there but just look around what we are able to witness today we have over 1 lakh print publications in the country we are talking about over 800 and plus television channels including about 300 plus news channels don't tell me what kind of news is being disseminated that's for another discussion but yes we have news channels and uh, in terms of community radio stations we need to understand media doesn't uh, you know the mainstream media does not hold the uh, ultimate authority to say this is journalism or this is the only savior right today journalism has been democratized media has been democratized so we have alternative media platforms as well be it community radio uh, platforms or it could be even the plethora of digital media outlets that we have you know in fact um, one of the living examples that we have in, in our panel uh, pratibha uh, uh, is practicing as a free, freelance journalist you know uh, don't we say she is free now she is free from the shackles of the corporate bonding of all the dictates of her bosses what say pratibha uh, so somewhere we also have we do like this is one of the best times to be 
because this is truly a democratic atmosphere in the sense i'm not talking about constitutional guaranteed democracy that is something that was always there i'm also talking about technology driven freedom that all of us are enjoying you don't have to wait for somebody to give you freedom you have freedom to start your own outlet start your own media enterprise express your views the very fact that we have assembled here we are discussing whether press is free itself is an evidence that yes we have freedom to express the very fact that our beloved professor expressed that when have we ever been free that itself is freedom i think you know we are free enough to speak our minds yes i agree there are trolls i'm not um, uh, negating the fact that we have people again the, these people are not targeting only journalists they would target anybody had pratibha not been a journalist and still posted that article i'm sure the trolls would still continue if the same article was reposted by me or anybody else i'm sure we would still have those trolls so i don't think it is about specific to a party i don't think freedom is any is freedom is uh, we we, are, we need to look at freedom only from the press point of view somewhere we have gone beyond that and journalists who actually talk about press freedom i don't know if we are actually even talking to ground reporters who are working in a news organizations see if you were if you can uh, rope them in for a panel discussion uh, such and such and ask them this question see if they can honestly answer then you know who is giving them freedom right we have our panelists not affiliated with organizations discussing so freedom but the moment they openly talk about their affiliation we will know freedom so are we saying we will blame bjp or the congress for restricting our voices no it's somebody else right that there is there's a bigger villain there so i i think in the future discussions all of us might probably throw more light on that yeah you know uh, it's amazing how we're getting such uh, different different perspectives i think uh, pratibha has uh, you know something to share yes please ma'am yeah please go also just one more thing uh, all the people who are watching this please share your questions on your uh, chat box of youtube or facebook uh, we will we will pick those questions and ask the respective uh, panelists these questions thank you over to you pratibha well i mean several points that have been raised and i'm trying to see if i can address each of them one by one one is that i think i missed when sampath mentioned that uh, uh, media was gagged right since the time of emergency at least at that time it was uh rights were denied openly right now it almost seems like your rights are being denied almost very stealthily but steadily uh the second point is i think uh, sambit was also talking about whether press is really free and shilpa talking about uh, how uh, the fact that we are discussing press freedom in itself is freedom i must tell you sachin that i was driven to independent journalism by choice but i was driven to journalism by accident and um, if you ask me whether i love my tenure as a journalist or my tenure as an independent journalist i think the answer is very very plain and out there for you to uh, realize that i love my state right now but do i really enjoy the freedom here is my answer to it since shilpa wanted somebody who has been working in a media organization to answer this well i have survived in uh, many such media organizations for about 13 years now to tell you another example i always uh, frame my answers in stories so one such story that uh, has truly happened in my life is when um, there was uh, a story about a kerala priest who was allegedly um, uh, sexually harassing a married woman and um, i was asked to write the story at around 10:30 pm in the night and uh, it was already a little too late for me to gather facts so i suggested to the uh, owner of my media organization telling him that i would do it the next morning when i have some follow up details because we are already too late because media organizations are, dri- are generally driven by you know being first on uh, uh, breaking news your stories so since we were already i know breaking news and first on uh, this platform so the next morning the follow up was that the church had uh, suspended the priest so my headline said uh, church suspends uh kerala church suspends priest uh, accused of sexually harassing a woman and i was immediately uh, 
uh, receiving a call from the owner the right now and immediately frame it in such a manner that i don't protect the church but i actually accuse the church i if this is uh, freedom i don't know whether we as journalists are really going the right going in the right track so i had immediately changed the he- headline to say that the church takes 24 hours to sack priest accused of sexually harassing married woman Okay. So I think that about sums up or sets the tone for today's discussion. Okay. Well, I think uh, uh, you know I think there are many such instances uh, you know that many journalists have been asked to change their uh, stories headlines their angles uh, many times uh, the stories have also been pulled off right and the journalists have also been sacked for writing some such kind of stories and i think so uh, pratibha you have uh, uh, very nicely you know very boldly shared this uh, with the students thank you for that i think uh, mr Sambi, professor sambit has a point to share uh, please sir yeah. go ahead yeah just just one one you know uh, uh, one statement for all of us to think about how many stories have you seen about the finance ministers of india how many negative stories have you found in indian television and newspaper against the finance ministers of india i just stop at that this i put it for you know your thoughts i have experiences about that i'm not going to share that right now but i'm just putting it out so maybe you can just uh, you know give a share it like a story in a third person okay yeah yeah you. i won't take name again uh, yes yes uh, you know, but because the story didn't go on air so i was working with the national channel someone some top politician uh, from the state i belong to bengal had mocked the then finance minister something like joker or something that he was called i was so excited that you know a top politician of my state is you know calling the finance minister of the country a joker or something i don't remember the exact uh, you know word but it was something like that i i sent that report and it was never carried and i wasn't told that why it was not being carried so i rushed uh, to the spot got that sound bite sent it i was very excited but that never went on air and there are many such uh, incidents yes, yes. i think uh, there's a lot of uh, censorship and gatekeeping rather i think the word is gatekeeping that happens in the uh, media um where you know certain things are not allowed yeah i think uh, coincidentally even uh, our politician sampath ramanujam was raising his hands so uh, just as there's a quirky note when if he becomes a finance minister how would be the state of the journalist i would just ask and then he can share his point of view after that see um, um, one the <laughs> one thing sachin everyone will note. agree everyone will agree um, uh, press is our pillar for democracy yeah obviously if uh, press or media be controlled then you will not uh, um, understand the ground reality so anybody who is on position political role should closely work with media and press nobody will disagree with that including me right and then uh, one thing what surprised me is pratibha was telling comparing the current situation with the emergency where we are now where emergency is right so now we have uh, like pratibha we have pre- freelancing journalists independent journalists see anybody who is having android mobile and camera is a journalist now right i have my personal experience i went to a co- cooperative bank all these farmers are made to sit for the manager to come this guy was almost two and a half hours late and then he arams i entered and then he said uh, boss i got late with my meeting other meeting i went there but uh, the other problem is he not started with this work he started making commands on people there and then he is making jokes puns but this farmers are sitting there on fire so i was asking this guy sir can you uh, help this guys who are sitting there for last two hours so he was addressing me in different way the moment i put on my android mobile and my pocket then the whole tone changed he said mm, what is the case what is the token number give me let's quickly move this thing. so anybody who is having camera now is a journalist that kind of independent platforms we have now so let's not compare with the emergency emergency is a gone days now we are here every individual citizen is a journalist now but the other thing what pratibha reminded me is breaking news breaking news is a big disaster for media everybody started the race the moment breaking news came media started putting pressure on their own colleagues and uh, uh, employees 
right? And because of this breaking news, everybody jumps in and uh, asks left and right any question they can ask because they want something sensational. The moment they started raising sensational, we we lost our ground of the first freedom, right? So that is when the moderation is required. That is what now government is doing currently. And one more thing, what I want to mention is like our um, uh, Shilpa had mentioned. Never India was in the ranking of below 50 or below 100. You were there in 120, 140, even I had mentioned in my first round. So let's not worry about this ranking. Let's see what is happening now. Like Samit had mentioned, uh, he was mentioning about US. Where US is in the rank now? Right? If you take the same list of ranking, US is not on the top. And 180 countries, if you take in the ranking list, only 7%, 12 countries are uh, listed as unfavorable uh, countries for the press and press freedom. What happened to the remaining 170 plus countries? Do you think that there is no media in these countries? So, uh, going with this uh, list is not at all uh, right. And uh, the other thing what I had uh, uh, mentioned is anything in moderation is good. right? You can't give uh, open freedom for anybody. Uh, I was in software earlier. If you give uh, freedom in software environment, you will not get your delivery. <laughs> right? A basic example. So, any environment, you have to have a moderation. So, that is the moderation we have now. What I am seeing is, is it is going good. And what I see 10 years back and now, at least we have a kind of a controlled environment. Uh, rather, I will say moderated environment where media knows what their role is. It is not that I am on top. And then I can ask question to anybody. Like somebody that mentioned, I can speak about PM, I can speak about the finance minister, anything, whatever I believe. So as I had mentioned, one second I'll mention, now media, media is no more an information platform. It is an opinion platform now. Anybody who has opinion started sharing it on media now. So that kind of a controlled or moderated environment is most required in this Wonderful, wonderful uh, point of view, Sampath. I think uh, taking cue from what you said, I would want to throw a question to uh, Shilpa, ma'am. Um, Sampath did speak about how certain things are happening in a particular way. Now, I think the, the bone of contention lies in uh, how these journalists are being taught or trained in their colleges. As an academician, um, what would you suggest or what is your point, uh, what is your uh, way of uh, uh, teaching these young, uh, you know, budding journalists, aspiring journalists? What do you felt that uh, that you taught or you want to implement so that uh, A, you know, uh, we have good journalists, B, we also do not have co control over these journalists by either the editors or their uh, business owners. So what is your point of view as an academician? Uh, yes, Sachin, that's a very interesting question, you know, because this is something, this is a dilemma that all academicians face. Because on the one hand, you have reality there, uh, where, where you see a lot of criticism against uh, the way media works or rather the way a journalist go through pressure. But to be very honest, I, I'm not the question is, you know, not sure you're asking, yes. how are you cool of it? It's working. I have constantly been right. telling our students. I've given them citing examples of the likes of Pratibha. It could be Pei de Souza. It could be so many of these journalists who have come out of broken the shackles of the uh, corporate-owned media organizations and they are following their heart. You know, they are doing independent journalism. So somewhere, you know, the technology has provided platform for them to do good journalism. So somewhere, you know, we are driving them, uh, you know, enough and more, uh, what do you say, uh, we, we are trying to inculcate those values of true journalism, what ought to be done, how ought to not be carried away by, uh, uh, you know, toxic competition. I would like to add, add that word toxic. It is actually toxic, right? Yeah. Just a recent example of the way media went ahead and announced uh, the death of uh, the actor, actor Punit Rajkumar, even when the officials had not declared... I agree that they would have got inside information, but that doesn't mean they have to go ahead and declare it. You know, there was a reason why the authorities were holding back the information. So just, you know, in the rush of saying, no, we want to be the first. So this is what I call toxic. So, you know, just moving out of the top atmosphere. I understand if you're in an organization where uh, you have to follow the dictates of your bosses, of your editors, you have people calling the shots. 
I know you will you are bound by the organization's rules, but now you have an alternative options. And in fact, I'm proud of Team Briefly for actually doing that. You know, they have uh, it's it's a team of young uh, youngsters. You know, fresh out of colleges, and uh, instead of going and working in an organization, they have come out and started their own uh, news platform. And I really like the way they introduce themselves, saying this is just news. right and this is this these are the ventures these are the examples that we try to um, you know uh, you know narrate and this is what actually can inspire youngsters and just one more point i wanted to add uh, um, my colleague uh, sambit pal sir had actually mentioned uh, that there were never a negative stories about finance minister but just to think about it why do you think there was ne- never a negative story about any finance minister it's not because of the finance minister himself or herself it's because of the market forces so somewhere you know are we missing the bigger picture here who is who who is the who, who are the forces driving stories whether it is favorable not favorable you know there is there are bigger forces right i think uh, these forces are very less discussed about because for us it is easy to target politicians because we uh, assume they are thick skin and it is it's very easy but then they are just probably they are just a mask that is Yeah. covering a bigger picture here yeah. wonderful yeah. Uh, uh thank you shilpa for uh, throwing in uh, uh, you know the backhand dealings and you know the the business side of uh, media also um i think that would come to, that would bring us to a, a very pertinent uh, uh, development in the current media scenario that is independent media right now uh, now how independent or how free is the independent media i think i would quickly ask um, Pratibha Raman, who herself is an independent journalist, to quickly throw some light on that, and then uh, I would want to shift the goalpost towards um, Professor Sambit uh, to tell us that uh, how, as an academician or as a college, we can support independent journalists, and how we take them, uh, you know, support them and give them all the, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, support, be it uh, technology, mentorship, little bit of funding, and a lot of other things. Uh, that I, w- I would come back to you first. Let us start off with Pratibha. Well, such and to answer your question uh, honestly, uh, every independent journalist also needs her daily bread and butter. Yeah. So that again lies in uh, the point that was raised by uh, Shilpa, because uh, all of us need to drive our own uh, businesses when it comes to our respective media outlets, and that happens only when you have to feed uh, the owner's ego or the funder's ego here. and uh, that becomes very difficult so we actually um, uh, travel on thin ice when it comes to handling <laughs> our own media outlet how to make it uh, yeah, survive or you know stay afloat uh, also becomes the bigger picture for us so in that manner are we really compromising on our values i'm not very sure perhaps we are uh, also in terms of you know the kind of um, uh, regular uh, citizen of the country if you have to question somebody for instance there were 17 first information reports that were lodged by the delhi police against some jobless youths and daily wages for simply putting up posters the poster asked the question as to why prime minister narendra modi had chosen to export vaccines needed by our own people so it was a simple poster that was really put out and there were uh, fir's being registered right around so imagine the condition of an independent journalist if he or she were to write a story like that against uh, mr modi or any politician for that matter the reason why we are targeting politicians is the fact that you know our main content thrives on questioning the government or its actions and uh, uh, perhaps that is precisely why we need to uh, uh, ensure that these backhand dealings also fund our respective media outlets so that way i'm not very sure whether independent journalists are really independent uh thank you pratibha for being so honest because i think um, today there is a lot of uh, you know talk about independent journalists independent media in fact everybody calling calling themselves as an independent media uh but i think you have exposed them say exposed them saying that at some point of time even they are being funded by some big uh, uh, you know how media business houses and they also are looking at some kind of uh, you know quid pro quo in the long run or at a particular situation right so uh, seems like uh, even that doesn't seem like a solution in fact i was thinking that could be a solution for the future but 
I think you've uh, you know very gravely exposed them. So now uh, coming back to uh, Professor Sambit, now uh, you know Pratibha has mentioned about how even independent media is failing. So now you as a, a head of or the dean of um, MIT College, how do you think you know we can uh, revive? Uh, the journalism industry, journalists, uh, not only the industry, even the spirit of journalists uh, through supporting independent media. How can we do that, sir? Yes, uh, and thank you, Pratibha, for you know telling it so bluntly and clearly. Because you know, independent journalists are the most vulnerable uh, people in this whole journalistic fraternity because they do not have any support of any big corporate house or media house. So that's a, that's a very you know difficult position that they are in. now another thing uh, before i come into you know how we can uh, you know tell a young aspiring journalist to adjust to this situation let's not be in the delusion that we are free in this you know uh, in this digital world that you know we are uh, because of technology it has been democratized yes apparently it has been as sampath sir has made uh, you know mentioned that if you have a, a mobile phone you can be a journalist smartphone with camera you are a journalist uh, shilpa ma'am was also mentioning that you know you, you can express your opinion you can send out your news and there is less of gatekeeping but there is gatekeeping there is gatekeeping of the tech giants even if uh, you know we are independent media suppose and briefly is independent media you have to depend on the tech giants to put your stories on the uh, ranking list of the google you need to you know depend on uh, facebook to use their algorithm to and you know feed it to the target audience you need to depend on uh, you know whatsapp to uh, reach out to your community that you want to build so there are gatekeepers now in in different forms so we are not free in that sense but still should we get so disappointed and just give up no as i mentioned in the initial remark that you know the change that i have i've been uh, you know watching in the journalistic fraternity that earlier the journalists at the ground level uh, shilpa ma'am was talking about the newsroom uh, scenario there the journalists were not that biased they were not just you know giving up to uh, the political forces or the corporate forces we had our own voices right and we could discuss it freely that is changing now you know we are thinking before writing a news or you know before broadcasting a news we are thinking whether it will be in, uh, you know in line with my uh, editor whether it will be in line with my editor's uh, policy editorial policy whether it will be in line with uh, the management's policy and on top of that whether you know the ruling party leaders will like is like this or not that is what is happening i tell the young you know minds out here do not think about that have your own voice do not stop asking question until you are being asked by your editor to stop somewhere because if you are working in any news organization you have to follow their policy so you cannot do uh, with that one thing you can do is that and leave that job and uh, become independent journalist if you are thinking of being independent journalist if you are thinking of having your own organization then think about building your community with the people as pratibha has mentioned the funding will come from some non profit organization but you'll have to follow their line right if he, if it is coming from any small small scale business also you'll have to follow their line the thing that is being debated and it has to be debated whether readers can find your fund your uh, you know initiative or not if that will solve this problem of you know press freedom and not being under pressure of the corporates or you know non profit organization or the politicians or the political parties and ideologies so we need to think about that we need to think about building the readers community and reaching out to them directly if we can do that that's a very hard uh, you know thing to do if we can do that and talk about the readers interest talk about the people's interest through our stories then i think this kind of ventures can Uh, be successful in the long long run and that will be exactly i mean th- that is that will be like ideal situation that we are looking at the media being the fourth pillar of the democracy thank you professor sambit uh, for give, you know for giving a very positive outlook at the end i think somewhere uh, you know we were all giving up saying that this is it nothing is going to happen but i think so very nice of you to give a very positive uh, twist to the entire thing and i hope all the young impressionable minds are taking these things in the very right spirit there are both uh, you know e- uh, goods and bads of this industry don't stick to the bads learn from the bads 
and i think so whatever the suggestions that our panelists are giving imbibe them and try to become a good journalist so uh, i think uh, is there any other uh, person who wants to make a quick comment in, as a, and for the panelists we can uh, quickly open up for the uh, question okay yeah sampath yeah please go ahead uh, please unmute yourself sir a uh, quick uh, response to whatever our uh, discussion was on so like uh, shilpa had mentioned a few cases right unique cases are there i agree there are cases might be there uh, there is a reason if you go in detail to the cases there might be a reason or right wrong let's not go into an unique cases but in overall our government or our pm personally making sure that there is a independent journalism going on right any government should do that and particularly the current government is doing that and uh, talking about independent journalism and then the freelancers right it is actually going good like uh, sambit had mentioned there might be a control about uh, the tech platform or the funders it goes with even the traditional media who is funding you which party you connected to what is your editorial policy what is your channel policy all this is controlled but there are channels like the better india magazine the citizen matters which is run by the citizen funded platforms they are have actually sharing very good things they are very positive if you go through their newses very positive and uh, if you go to uh, the, the channels like the wire and uh, red peaks there are channels particularly going against the current government they are open to share their videos if if you ask me to name them i can name them a dozen right there are channels particularly against modi ji particularly about the current government their da daily uh, videos and uh, newses are all particularly about the government and negative thing right but still they are open they are uh, going live so if it is, there is no media freedom then all these channels will not uh, live there on the platform no right so it is still there and um, about our um, uh, media uh, now if you see the real battle for the traditional media is the social media and then the uh, the freelancing and independent journalism right so because things are changing we moved from uh, every every other fla platform if you see movie we moved from theater to ott platforms now and we moved from our office based uh, working culture to uh, work from home now so things will change that is what is happening i don't think so a government or uh, the the freedom uh, policy in country is a challenge for the traditional media the challenge is about the tech platforms now so that is where the traditional media should focus on otherwise we are having complete freedom there and um, thanks for once again for a uh, live discussion like this thank you sachin uh, sachin if i may add you know uh, to what was said now i feel uh, it is very important that we somewhere induce some positivity around we are definitely not yes. living in a dystopian world right yes i agree there are lot of things which are not right which we we know is not um, uh, you know really favorable or there are things that are going wrong i'm not denying that i'm not saying we are living in any token uh, environment but at the same time let's not uh, you know make it sound completely negative and create a negative energy in the minds of young uh, you know youngsters wanting to get into journalism getting to media just that we need to probably tell them it's not just about don't only think about freedom also think about responsibility freedom with responsibility is important you know how you measure your words you are on social media yes but how many of them measure their words before posting something that's important right i i think i just that's what i yeah, thank you yeah. pradeepa please Uh, please, uh, yeah. I also thought that you know I should be responsible enough to end on a positive note, uh, <laughs> since I've been traveling on a very negative track all this while. No, no um, I think uh, you've been very honest. Yeah, and that is reality. Also. That is definitely reality. It's not yeah. everything. That's true. That is reality. reality yes. Yeah. But uh, I just wanted to uh, end with a note, uh, stating that when I ventured into independent journalism, this was during the peak of COVID. So uh, many around me, my uh, family, my well wishers, all of them were like shell shocked when I said that I'm going to quit the uh, corporate. Uh, I think uh, did we lose Pratiba? But uh, luckily, I must say that I have survived so far, and I'm pretty confident that I'm going to in the near future as well. 
Uh, so to all those young impressionable minds, it's not going to be too bad after all because um, you have the power of the pen, you have the power of the press, so you can really conquer the world. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Professor Samit, any closing remarks? As I said that, you know, it's uh, not about the negativity. Shilpa Ma'am is right that we shouldn't, you know, create that environment that everything is wrong. As I said that it has been there over the years, right? So we need to identify these things that, you know, what are the obstacles that we have and then how we can, you know, overcome them. As I said, this is uh, something that I observed that, you know, the ground level journalists are become, becoming very partisan. That shouldn't be the case. We should stop asking questions and then we should find our way out. That, you know, how we can report which will be beneficial for the people. We need to keep that in mind. When you're talking about free expression, free speech and all, whether it's going to benefit our readers, audience, consumers, news consumers as we call them, uh, whether it's for the people or not, whether it's for the benefit of the people or not, that is what we need to keep in mind and others can be, you know, taken care of. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sajin, one final thing, um, like Shilpa had mentioned, right, during Puneet Rajkumar's uh, um, dismay, like everybody started posting his uh, photos from hospital. Why people are so quick in sharing the negativity, right? Let it be, even if after one hour, if uh, formal news comes, it is good. Already police is struggling, government is struggling to settle the situation. Good that they handled it very well. And uh, if the news comes, it is a working day. And then if something happens in the afternoon, people who are working, students who are in school, college students, how the working people will go back to their house. So when government is handling this situation, people started sharing it in their WhatsApp and all that. Mm -hmm. so that is when this control comes, right? Because we have this independent and uh, uh, social media based uh, journalism now. People should have their own control in sharing things. Otherwise, control will come from the other direction. So it is obvious. And uh, this particular discussion, I want to mention this. Let's not be so quick. What you will get by sharing, that is where this breaking news thing had a becoming a very, very, very disaster to the media, right? So people want to share like, he is no more. And uh, posters are created, videos are... Because why so quick you want to share about that? Let it be after one hour. Anyway, government will announce it. Um, so uh, the control comes there. <laughs> and media freedom is always there. But let's be a moderate, responsible citizens, media people to take the right information, positive information, most important, to the citizens of the country. Thank you. I think we should have another panel on media <laughs> trials and how to report. <laughs> yes. yes, yes. We, we will. I think... Uh, I can can yeah. I just you know, make a very quick point? This yes, you know, yes. breaking news thing is, of course, uh, that has been given by uh, you know, television media. But yes, it's yes. a human characteristics that, you know, I am the first person I am telling you. Four yeah. more. That is the urge that causes this problem. Let's not blame media on your breaking news. Yeah. Correct, correct. Yeah. It's the FOMO effect. True. Yes, it's the FOMO effect. I think uh, I have one or two quick questions from the audience. I will uh, quickly point it out. One question for um, the journalist here, Pratibha Raman, saying that uh, they're asking how much uh, sense, uh, restriction is okay for media? Because uh, you know, everything is giving them a complete free hand is also not good. How much of freedom or what restriction should we bring in for media? Uh, can I answer this with another story? Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so this was during uh, uh, the trial of uh, Jayalalitha, uh, late uh, Tamil Nadu chief minister. And uh, I was inside the court. I was uh, uh, hearing the bail appeal of hers. And uh, there was another reporter from our uh, television channel who was uh, stationed outside the court and she was reporting on the going uh, on the ongoings of the court proceedings. And uh, I was busy typing out uh, whatever was being uh, uh, heard at, in the courtroom. And uh, it was just a split second when one of the lawyers of uh, Jailalita's team came out very jubilant in their body language and their attitude, sporting a smile year to year, and there were crackers being blasted. And so the immediate notion was that uh, she got her bail. So every media uh, reporter out there started uh, uh, mentioning that, uh, yes, the bail has been granted. 
and I was the person inside the courtroom and I, I'm bombarded with phone calls from the assignment, the desk saying, what are you doing? Every channel is breaking this and you're the only person sitting and hatching eggs inside the courtroom. And I said, no, I'm listening to the judge here. The sentence is not being read. The uh, last judgment is not being read. The verdict is still not out. So hold on. So I had to literally like, you know, succumb to that uh, pressure almost. And, and the nick of time is when the judge says the bail has been denied. And then I say the bail has been denied. So we were the only media outlet to report news accurately for once on that day uh, to, uh, to say that <laughs> Jalalita's bail has been denied. So that is the kind of pressure that every reporter is uh, uh, facing on a day-to-day -day basis when it comes to, you know, breaking news and all that. So what level of uh, uh, restriction that uh, we should really maintain is that you need to maintain credibility. That is what makes you a true journalist. I think that about answers uh, this person's question. Great. Fair point. I think another question is directed towards the politician here. Uh, they, I think the audience is requesting you to uh, confess, uh, you know, one one mistake of the, of the political system. And how would you as a, uh, a person in the political system, when you have the powers, you will change that? All right. For so I'll start with press, again for the press. For the press. For the media. Again, I will uh, start with my personal uh, experience on the uh, social media and open uh, freelancing independent media. Right. Just to start with. Just one minute. Uh, I think uh, we are extending our time. I hope all the panelists are okay with it because I think uh, it's really getting interesting. We are hoping to finish this 20 minutes ago, but then I think uh, we are doing a pretty good job. I hope everybody is on on board. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. The, the reason I am the reason I am politician today, <laughs> or officially elected representative, because of independent press and then uh, social media platforms. Mm. Otherwise, I saw when I was in college days, I saw the traditional uh, media, me, media printing media, getting a small box news in a newspaper. It's a very tough thing during my college days, school days. I have this cut cut uh, things which is on my albums, right? So very small, small news. But then when, when I was here in Bangalore, 16 years of um, software experience, used into a social platform uh, post, right? So I'm able to reach people very quickly. I don't have cutouts. I don't have banners. I don't have gigantic uh, uh, the blog blocking uh, uh, what you'll say <laughs> displays but at least i have simple post in whatsapp uh, facebook idea is that you have to take people have to know your face people have to know your uh, uh, brand who you are right what you do basically they have to understand who you are so that is clearly we can execute in social platform i mentioned the better india magazine because my cycling initiative the, we collect cycles from across Bangalore, service them and give it to government schools. I'm able to do 1,800 cycles last last year because the Better India magazine had supported us across India. Right? Such kind of independent platforms. The citizen matters. How many articles they had written about our initiatives, personally about me. Now I become politicians. Now media started. Stop covering my <laughs> initiatives. So that is, that is one worst thing uh, we should avoid. So don't connect. The moment I contested an election, I'm one another politician. And then all my initiatives are not getting that limelight now. I'm okay with it. If other person is getting it, somebody who is coming new, it is good. So what I'm trying to say is with social media platform, with this freelancing journalism, independent journalism, a lot of positive things are happening. Many people had changed their lifestyle, life through this. And coming back to the question, if I have to uh, confess... A yeah, uh, mistake from uh, political uh, group. What we are doing is again like the breaking news, right? We are thinking about our next election. This is the biggest mistake any politician does. Don't think about your next election. Next election to next election. Now you already won the election. Now try to focus on what you can do with the current rule. So this is the mistake. Across the party, politicians are doing. A councillor will think about becoming a chairman. A chairman will think about becoming a corporator or MLA. So MLA will think about how to become uh, a, a senior minister. Uh, minister, that level. Across country, across, you can say any country, Correct. across world, has this kind of a racing. How we had in media breaking news racing, 
we have here election race so people should focus on their work now you, you see after my elections i executed three important things 25% tax tax deduction light tax very less light uh, tax and then we are also giving solar lights to the genuine tax payers i am this is a eco friendly power saving initiative and we have our own uh, reporting tool now coming from a software background i'm trying to get an uh, tool there to report issues so anybody who is coming in try to make change with your current role and then uh, let's stop this racing of election wonderful thank you sampath i think uh, the country or the world needs more politicians like you thank uh, you for whom who started off from a activist background and who are still continuing your activist um, uh, work i think maybe a pratibha should do a story on uh, uh, how you are balancing both social uh, life and your political life yeah so i think uh, that is a very interesting note i have i have one more question for the academicians yeah saying that uh, have you people been encountered the situation where your students have actually come back to you saying that i have been asked to do something unethical how did you people handle it uh i had a, a student of mine who did come back and say it was nothing unethical but then she did go through a toxic work atmosphere yes. so we need to also understand it's not journalism it's not just about a lofty profession i mean lofty ideals but it is also a profession like any other you know it's not just an idealistic uh, situation that uh, you know people go through right it could be the working condition you are an employee and you are practicing journalism right i mean if you are working in a media organization so uh, she did go through a tough time and as a starter and it working in a reputed national uh, news channel i don't want to name the channel but then uh, in fact we were very proud when she actually got in but then uh, when she uh, spoke to me and opened about uh, what she was going through it was disturbing all i told her was you know don't give up and if it is really toxic i told her to you know move out but i think she found her way around the situation and she's still continuing to work with the organization and she says the situation is better it's about patience a lot of times such uh, the most exploited ones are the ones who get in uh, the freshers like in any other industry it's not just in uh, in media organizations even in other organizations i'm sure uh, some bits are also will agree uh, with me students do go through uh, this when they it, it's disillusionment they feel okay this is not what we thought it was it is going to be so uh, just that we need to build resilience that's one thing uh, to uh, you know just to uh, talk about it openly and tell them what is in store what could be uh, in store for them and how they could be better prepared is uh, what we should probably be uh, talking about a lot okay uh, professor sandeep i think i would uh, rephrase the question to you i think you have been 15 years of uh, you know journalistic experience also how did you handle a junior of yours who had some situation like this how did you uh, you know mentor or counsel them or coach them during those days when they had to face a adverse situation yes uh, that's a very you know good uh, question that you are asking um, see uh, it has happened it has happened with all of us so what what can be the worst thing that can happen that you know i want to do a story and that's being you know dumped that you know i mean as that do not do this story or you know that's not being accepted the idea is being rejected and stuff like that all of us have faced this i think pratibha will also agree that you know in our journalistic life uh, we have been our ideas have been rejected uh, hundreds of times that you know we come up with some idea and that's been getting rejected and every reporter thinks and which should be uh, the case that my story is the best story you know i am doing the best story in this world and you know, that should be accepted but there are certain you know issues conditions situation atmosphere which are also driving you to this position where your uh, ideas are getting rejected it has happened to me and i tell this to my uh, juniors i have told this to my students as well you are working in an organization which is paying you for this job and you have to you know listen to your boss you cannot do anything about that one thing you can do is that you know leave that job and you know look for another job but wherever you go you have to 
uh, you know, uh, look up to your boss and whatever he is saying that you'll have to follow that. Yes, of course, you can argue. You can, you know, fight till the last moment. That is what you should do. But you should give up your, uh, you know, battle at some point of time. You cannot pick up each and every battle and then get frustrated. You need to move on and think about what, you know, better story you can do. And I have seen in my life and told this to my students also and, of course, uh, my colleagues, whenever I got very frustrated with a rejection of my story idea, that is the moment I have missed big stories in my life. So my you know, theory is that leave, if you are a journalist, leave a life like a daily wage laborer. Take each and every day as a new day. Do not think what has happened. If you have done a very good story, if your editor has patted your back, leave it there. Because if you do a bad story or if you miss a story today, you'll be bashed. So every day, Take it as a new day and think about new stories, new you know uh, things that you want to do and tell the stories of the people that you should do. So if you follow this formula, I think a lot of issues can be resolved uh, and not, you do not carry those frustration with you. I have worked with a news organization for uh, almost 12 years. I don't want to name that. Uh, many people will, you know, uh, will not believe me that I survived that news organization for 12 years. I don't want to name it, but <laughs> you can do that if you follow this, you know, formula. Oh. Thank you so much, Professor uh, Sambit Ji. I think uh, uh, what you have told is something that is thumb rule of all budding journalists. Very important. Uh, also, I would want to share the certain things that I personally, I have also been an academician and a media professional. What I have been doing in my limited capacity is that um, I also mentor a lot of startups and uh, usually these young uh, minds, they ask certain questions and sometimes I'll have to ha handle them very wittily and, you know, counsel them rather give them direct uh, solutions. Uh, I think that has worked. And uh, I've also started one, uh, you know, media incubation hub called Mira, it's my mother's name. It's uh, media edu entrepreneurship, education and other services so that we can help these youngsters uh, who wants to start something on their own, who are completely disillusioned by the mainstream media. I think this is something that, uh, you know, everybody can do in their own personal capacity. Yeah, you don't need much money. You just need the right will and, uh, uh, you know, to train and mentor these people. Money, yes, it's a difficult thing. It will come sometime soon. But I think what is important right now is to keep their morals high. And another important thing that uh, I would want to share that what... Uh, uh, academic institutes can do for uh, helping uh, independent journalists. Uh, one thing is like how Shilpa and Sambit Ji have been there mentoring personally students, telling them what to do, what not to do. Uh, there are some colleges, I think, uh, uh, are helping their, uh, you know, former students. Yeah, I think uh, MIT is helping uh, Krishan, uh, who's uh, founder of Briefly. Uh, I think we, there's a plan of, uh, you know, uh, making a launch in their campus and uh, doing it a I think that's a very good, uh, wonderful step. I think uh, many such colleges must do it to their to their uh, students. Yeah, I think I would. Uh, uh, we would. Uh, I think uh, uh, Christian would uh, talk about it. You know, uh, we'll share the information once the dates are all fixed. I think that would be a great support if the uh, you know the faculty or the college with the study it support the students and help them launch and do a lot of publicity for them, get them the attention. I think that would be one important uh, support that we can do. And in this way, they don't have to worry about money. They don't have to fall for ideologies or they don't have to listen to certain uh, business interests. I think that is a good step, I think, what MIT has done. And we're hoping other, other uh, you know, uh, universities and institutes should also support such kind of initiatives by their own students. Yeah, saying all these things. Yes, yes, sir. You want to say something? Yes, yes. So we at ISBG, we really encourage our students to, you know, come up with their own ideas and, you know, this kind of ideas of independent journalism and all. And we are all ready to support. And I think every, you know, institution will be doing that. And uh, it's just not about, you know, supporting them with uh, the publicity and all, but also supporting them in the uh, you know, time of crisis, like the one you mentioned that, you know, if they're facing anything, they can always come back and talk to the teachers right. here. So we have exactly. created that atmosphere at ISBJ in MIT at University. And we are really, you know, proud of our students who are taking this kind of initiative yes. and proud to support them. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you. And we hope, uh, you know, this uh, spreads to all universities. 
So I think uh, we're coming to almost to the end of the session. We have almost dragged it off for 30 minutes longer. Uh, seems like the, the you know everybody every panelist has been uh, quite interested in this extension. Uh, what I would like to you know point out very clearly is that this has been a very constructive uh, panel discussion or a debate that you want to call, wherein I think everybody spoke their heart out. They criticized themselves and their own uh, industry, and they also uh, praised an industry which they're always seen uh, you know. Uh, adverse to. I think that's the best about this uh, entire panel discussion where it is good to be, it is not good to be wrong, but when you've done a mistake, accept it. I think that's how this entire uh, panel discussion has been. I thank all the panelists for being so honest and making sure the next generation gets the right message. Uh, that is very important. And we hope that next time when we have a panel discussion, uh, the panel, the uh, uh, India's ranking has should have shot up and you would have had more freedom, uh, you know, in, uh, uh, you know, in the, in the in, in, not only in India, the whole world. We have more universities like uh, MIT, where we have uh, more such launches. We have more politicians like uh, Sampath, uh, who are, uh, who have been an activist and who have now become uh, politicians and who can change the, uh, uh, you know, political industry. We have more, uh, you know, independent journalists like Pratibha, who did not want to fall prey to the system either for the money or ideology or the political parties and probably have more faculties like uh, Shilpa who have uh, uh, imbibed positive and, uh, you know, practical uh, knowledge among the students. I thank you all. I also thank all the participants. I hope you all had a wonderful time. I think uh, personally also I felt this panel discussion has been very constructive. Everybody got the right right uh, questions and the right answers. Equal time was given to everybody. It's 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 it's, be it's beautiful. We I hope you could have fixed I, it for some more time. Just just a last point. I just wish all the panel discussions on television uh, is like. <laughs> <laughs> Amen so, to that, Shilpa. <laughs> so, should I take it as a compliment for me? <laughs> yes, fine, of course. Yeah, yeah, it's a compliment for moderator. Of course, of course, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, also, I would want to uh, thank everybody on behalf of Briefly. I also mentor this uh, startup. Um, and I think they're a young group, uh, very, very passionate, very, very idealistic. I keep telling them that sometimes, uh, you know, I keep telling them straightforward. You're not a journalist, you're a businessman. Yeah, I hope that's the right advice. Yeah, they're doing a lot of good work. I hope they do not, uh, uh, you know, they get the right support and, uh, you know, they grow up to be one of the top uh, industries because they have always stood for the right reasons. And I hope uh, we continue and do many more such kind of panel discussions and, uh, you know, enlighten the young minds. Thank you all. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you.